There are many different types of gearing available. The simplest might be what we call a spur gear head. So if this is the output of the motor shaft, then it could be spinning a larger gear. So this gear is natu naturally spinning slower. Then attached to this larger gear, we have another small gear. And that's spinning another large gear. And attached to that, we have another small gear spinning a larger gear etc. And so each time we go through one of these in the chain, we're increasing the gear ratio. Uh, typically in a spur gear head, instead of spreading them out in a line like this, we would uh, have this little gear here spinning an another big gear right here, and then this little gear would be spinning another gear here so that we keep it very compact. So for instance, if each of these gear ratios had a gear ratio of three, then I'd have a gear ratio of three, then nine, then 27, and we can increase dramatically the output gear ratio. So these are, this is called a spur gear head, but there's many other kinds available. Here's one, these are called planetary gears. So the input here is this gear, and so the motor spins this, which causes, uh, it's just called the sun, which causes these planets to spin around the inside of this internal gear. And so the output shaft is attached to this triangle here. So the inner one spins quickly, the planets move slowly on the outside, and the planets carry with them this Y-shaped output gear. That's planetary gears, and the good thing about them is that they mesh at multiple points with the internal gear, so you can have more teeth engaged and therefore a stronger gearhead capable of higher output torque. These are bevel gears, so if this is the input gear here, then the output gear here not only is spinning more slowly, but it's also 90 degrees offset. These are called worm gears. So this piece up here is called the worm, and it's spinning the worm gear. And with this, you can see that uh, the amplitude, the speed is greatly reduced. If this is spinning quickly, then the worm gear here is going to be spinning much more slowly. We also have lead and ball screws that convert rotational motion to linear motion. So the way this works is if we have a motor down here spinning this uh, screw, essentially, then this piece sitting on it, by virtue of the fact that it's got four shafts preventing this from rotating, as the screw rotates, this has to translate back and forth. Another way to convert linear, rotational motion to linear motion is using rack and pinion. So if we have a motor spinning this pinion, then the rack is going to move linearly underneath the pinion. And here's an interesting uh, gear head. It's a little complicated to understand, but it's called a harmonic drive. And the input is this elliptical wave generator. So this is attached to the output of the motor shaft. And it's turning this ellipse. And attached to this ellipse is a, a flexible spline, this thing in colored black. And that flexible spline moves around and makes contact with this rigid internal gear. And as it does that, it rotates very slowly. So you can see for every rotation of this input elliptical wave generator, the output denoted by this arrow is moving very slowly. So with a harmonic drive, you can get a big gear reduction in just a single stage, sometimes up to 50 or 100 to 1 gear reduction.